Hancock had a major heart attack at the age of 46. She feared the worst. Her dad had died of such an attack at age 47. But 21 years later, the grandmother from Braintree is still going strong, thanks to some revolutionary heart treatments. She's become one of the first people in Britain to have her heart monitored by experts in London from the comfort of her own home. And it's thanks to the internet. Martin Stew reports. My daughter and Wendy and you. Yeah. Maureen and John Hancocks have been happily married for 48 years. Together, they've three children, plenty of grandchildren and a lifetime of happy memories in Braintree. But had it not been for pioneering heart treatments, it's unlikely Maureen would have been around to enjoy any of them. That's me. 21 years ago, she suffered a massive heart attack and has had complications ever since. I've cried many a time, you know, with fear. And my two sons have, and my husband has. And they just thought, well, you know, we're not going to have her very much longer. <laughs> and look at me now. In 2004, surgeons fitted Maureen's heart with a miniature defibrillator. Now, rather than having to go to London for checkups, she can let consultants monitor her heart remotely. You can be connected all the time. And if you do need them, phone them, test yourself. They know what's going on with your heart. So where somebody else wouldn't know and you'd be rushed in an ambulance, they know straight away through this. You can't put a price on life. Wonderful. She's one of the first six people in the UK to trial the remote monitoring. And today they gathered at St Bartholomew's Hospital in London. Sometimes the patient doesn't even know that they've had something untoward, but we can catch it uh, before anything further happens. So if we see something that's nothing to do with the actual programming of the device, we can then get our consultant involved and then they can ring the GP or dictate a letter to the GP and get their medications changed at a local level. Whilst Maureen still has some complications, thanks to this new technology, she's got her old independence back. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Braintree. Amazing, isn't it? Just the size of a laptop, really. It's incredible. More fascinating things on the internet coming up later in the programme. But thanks for being... More news now from your part of the region. A man from Harlow has been jailed for life for the murder of a disabled woman in the town last February. Scott Riley admitted killing Jennifer North, who was 62. She died from multiple stab wounds after being attacked by Riley in her car. The 26-year-old was told he will serve at least 22 years in prison. The parents of a two-year-old girl from Norwich who died from meningitis last year are embarking on a fundraising mission in her memory. Georgia Keeling died from the disease last August. Doctors had misdiagnosed her with swine flu. Seven months on and her family are organising a series of local events to help raise money for Meningitis UK. The heartache never goes away and missing it never goes away, but you, you move on and doing this fundraising, it makes it easier a little bit to know that you're trying to help prevent it happening to anyone else again. Next, a pensioner from Norfolk has made a remarkable discovery among the rocks in his garden. John Ruggles from Downham Market has had an unusually shaped stone in his flower bed for some time, but he's just found out it's a dinosaur fossil dating back 135 million years. Stuart Leeds reports. A rainstorm batters the primordial swamp of Jurassic Norfolk. Somewhere in the mists, an ageing dinosaur is taking its dying breaths. At least that's one possible explanation for how a dinosaur fossil ended up in John Ruggles garden at Downham Market. Having spent the past few years as part of John's rock garden, it has only just been officially identified. We was all very excited about it, you know, being so so old, so old, you know, and to touch it again, knowing how old it was, was a, a different experience altogether. John, who's 75, has had the plesiosaur fossil since moving to Downham nine years ago, but he's only just found out what it is after finally sending it to the Lynn Museum in Kings Lynn, who passed it on to the Sedgwick Museum of Earth Science in Cambridge. It was over there, over there, in the greenhouse. And then when I got it back from the um, museum, after they'd said what it was, it's since then been wrapped up in bubble wrap and 
taken very good care of. <laughs> It's an almost complete bone from a 135 million year old plesiosaur's paddle. And experts say these marks are fossilised blood vessels. John has his own theory about how it came to be in his garden. One of the main thoughts was somebody wanted some stones for their rockery and had gone to a quarry somewhere and picked, picked what they wanted up, not realising what they was picking up. If that's just a small part of a dinosaur's flipper, then surely there could be the rest of a dinosaur around here somewhere. Stuart Leith's Anglia News, Down and Market. We'll let you know if he finds anything. <laughs> In sport, the Irish press is reporting that former Ipswich Town manager Jim Magilton is taking the Suffolk Club to court. Magilton left Portman Road in April last year after seven years as a player and three as manager. He's quoted in the Belfast Telegraph saying he's yet to reach an agreement over the termination of his contracts. On the pitch, the threat of relegation refuses to go away at Portman Road after another weekend defeat. In fact, matters of promotion or relegation are on the minds of all of our region's managers, as Jim Rice now reports. Roy Keane called it Groundhog Day, and on Oscars weekend, the film reference won't have been lost on the Ipswich press corps. The script's a familiar one. Ipswich draw a blank and fail to keep a clean sheet. Another unhappy ending. Is a good goalkeeper and a bad finish? And I think a bit of both. I think um, the chance we had the other day... I think that keeper makes a really good save from David Healy. Other than that, I don't think we're really hitting the target. So as much as we're creating so many chances, certainly if you don't hit the target, you've got no chance. All those missed chances and Gareth McCauley's mistake were punished by Jason Yule, leaving town once again just a point above the bottom three. The teams ahead of us, the teams behind us, all of games in hand over us and um, we need to get some results. If relegation's unthinkable for Ipswich fans, it's looking unavoidable for Peterborough. No sign of a great escape at home to Coventry, the only goal scored by John Stead, who is, of course, on loan from Ipswich. The most popular film in the Norwich dressing room must be up. The Canaries now seven points clear at the top of League One, their three amigos with a goal each on Saturday. Houlihan, Holt and Martin now have 60 between them this season. When award season comes round, Carrow Road's looking a good bet for a trophy and a golden boot. The story of South End's season's in danger of ending up in the bargain bin at the video store. Three more precious points passed by at Hartlepool. The Shrimpers undone by a player who spent a month on loan at Roots Hall earlier this season. Roy O'Donovan's hat-trick condemning South End to a place in the bottom four. Jim Rice, Anglian News. No game for Colchester on Saturday. The U's, of course, play tonight at home to Brighton.